what would be the climate impact of a small shift in diet in China. Project out to 2030, and you say, what if the amount of beef being consumed in China was reduced by just 5%, and that consumption moved over to pork and chicken? It turns out that the emission reductions would be about 200 million tons of greenhouse gas emissions a year, which is pretty significant. There's nobody working that strategy right there. There's no funders, there's no NGOs. Innovation is a central part of how you get out of stuckness throughout human history. How do you solve the hardest, most difficult conundrum? The only real solution to that is to innovate, is to do something extraordinary and creative. Well, I think there's some really interesting analogies between the call to arms to go to space and the call to arms to change the energy system. It's a call to do something exciting rather than a call to prevent something bad from happening. And I, I think a really key aspect is the effort to turn solving the climate problem into an exciting opportunity to make life on Earth better. We can take risk and we should be taking risks. So I think that's where philanthropy is really unique. NGOs can't do that without our support. Companies have responsibilities to their shareholders, investors, same sort of thing. I think we've made unbelievable amounts of progress in the last five years. So I think we can build a fossil fuel free economy. The question is whether we'll do it in time. And that's what I focus on, accelerating the pace of change so that we can get the emission reductions fast enough to avoid the worst impacts of climate change. If we can hold open the space for solutions, if we can you know, simply make the commitment collectively to not take too many more steps in the wrong direction, there's an awful lot of people with an awful lot of great ideas and a lot of energy and enthusiasm about filling up that space with the kind of solutions we're going to need.